with me and I and our woman looking for the grave. <laughs> oh, Gloss, I can't go on. I can't remember the next bit. I forgot to the silly words. Bit? Silly words? The phrases are true poetic speech, not words, not bits. You really must be Moria and we to go on next Thursday. Thursday is my birthday. <laughs> I'll be 19. <laughs> I can't possibly do either to see on my birthday. It's too, too depressing. <laughs> anyway, Singh was a silly old man who never should have written this stuff because I can't possibly say it. <laughs> Just then, a tall, pale Dubliner strolled into the tea room. I assumed he was a grad student. I'm looking for a man, I began. That's a novel approach. <laughs> I'll be your man to carry a body. Very sorry, can't do that. It's a small character part, but a good one. An Aaron Island carpenter building a coffin for a drowned fisherman. Sounds too nice. Only out of the hospital for the day you come. Let myself out. Just scouting Dublin, getting material for the cabaret act at Madame Collins. I've been told there's choice material here at the 12th night rehearsal. But, earwig in here, it's only relevant. Ah, uh, yeah, using the method, directing <coughs> TCD prima donnas in peasant drama. <laughs> <laughs> what father? Madame Collins will adore this. <laughs> What do you do in this cabaret at Madame Collins? <laughs> Impersonations, <laughs> mime, comedy. Stories and characterizations are really people. Come and see me cabaret act, and then decide if you want me for your outfit. Maury was suddenly eager. <laughs> Is this the way one gets oxed out in college? <laughs> it wasn't a date. John of Gaunt met me at the National Library. He helped me look up copies of old Freeman's journals for the Council of the Playboy Riots at the Abbey Theatre. And he had a story himself. Wasn't me grandpa in the protest? We crossed the library floor with Sapienti, engraved in the marble. John asked, will we have our tea in Robert's Cafe in Grand Street? Just hung those albums playing the cello in the fiddle. <laughs> and with the Robert String Trio playing Irish music, John regaled us with stories of Madame Cogby's studio theater. <laughs> if it weren't for Madame Cogby, there wouldn't be anywhere for actors to train, try out new material. <laughs> Tonight, they're doing the Irish premiere of William Saloy's Slaughter of the Innocents. <laughs> sure, no one else in town would chance that. Then after the play, my show. <clears throat> Then the parody, with any kind of wine you like, red or white, all oh, very high <laughs> Cogby's is just a dank basement that Madame Sun Ferris diggied up. He wired some lamps to shine on a few yards of stage, struck a curtain for the proscenium, threw in a few rows of benches for the audience, and voila, lit it up. Madame directs shows like Savoy would never pay the Olympian, even the gate. I'm sure Madame used to be in the gate with Hilton Edwards and Michael McLeamore. But there was a row, a temperamental row, half temper and half mental. <laughs> <laughs> She's still on the board at the gate, but she has her own ideas. Harvey has a hate me left over when she runs a show, or oh, very dedicated. La, almost every show. There's more characters on stage than in the audience. <laughs> in the soft of a misty evening, John led us down backwater lanes till we reached the dark, lovely Georgian house in Lower Mount Street. The gate creaked, leading down slimy steps to a garden flat that was converted into the tiniest theater imaginable. The only experimental theater in Ireland. Madame Copy herself was a petite French antique with short silver hair. Her eyes were crossed, piercing into John and me. 
through Joyce and spectacles. Bonjour, Jean, she smiled, kissing him on both cheeks. Bonjour, Yvonne, enchanté. Bienvenue. John's cabaret began then. He appeared in white face, wearing the velvet costume of the whimsical Walker, a music hall clown from the early 1900s. He elegantly mined a series of portraits, becoming the figures in the paintings by Toulouse Lautrec, Pablo Picasso, El Greco, and then Sean Keating. Tales of laughter erupted when he impersonated an American, directing posh Trinity students in a peasant country. <laughs> Accurately, hilariously, he imitated. <clears throat> you got to get your motivation. Think. Get the image in your head. See what you say. Before you say what you see, <laughs> see the gray pony in your mind, Moria. Sounds utterly ridiculous to me. How can I possibly mind a gray pony with my eyes? <laughs> anyway, think was a silly old man. Never should have been the stuff because I can't possibly say. More nails of laughter. Then after the show, there was a monster. Theatre, who? <laughs> Madame served pots of tea and a bit of cake in the hands. Everyone brought cheap wine and drank from old jam jars. <laughs> there was hardly enough space to find your map. <laughs> I met some famous Dubliners at that who? Brendan Bean, my old Jay, and my favorite wonderful poet, Patty Cabinet of Seven. Praises for John rang out. Ah, Sean, Ron, we were only cops with a laughter. Everyone became fluter and was offering us whiskey. I'm not able for this, John said. Madam gave us both a glass of fine wine and her appraisal. This was a remark at the evening, John. You have a gift to make us laugh and sometimes weep for joy. Ivan, you must share with us your American training. You should take that carpenter part, John. Play a tragic role. Play all roles. Get experience in all styles. I will, John answered. I only ever want to live within the four walls of the theater. Every style in the lovely theater. And in Grafton Street, in November, we tripped lightly along the ledge of the deep ravine where can be seen the true worth of passion's pledge. I saw the danger, yet I walked along the enchanted way. And I said, let's greet the fallen leaf at the dawning of the day. Guess what? 26 South Ann Street once was. <laughs> See the Irish Times this morning? Fashionistas taking over South Ann Street, turning the place into a guest <laughs> shopping bag. <laughs> Would you cringe that? Nanny Gabriel poured it over in her grave. I remember the autumn day in 1953 when John shouted, We'll fly into South Ann Street, give it stash on Mike in Ann's Lane. I'll pick up your pension in the Ann Street Post Office, and you'll meet the Mazzy Aunt Gabrielle, A.G. Wheeler's father. Her confirmation name's Annie Gabrielle, after the angel Gabriel. She's no angel, but never mind. Her back is as bad as her bust. <laughs> so be warned, A.G. was squatting in the dark rear room of her drag drapery shop, while Connie and Maureen designed wedding hats on old hat blocks. A.G. was eternally warming her long fingers by the meager fire, and hopefully changing the position of the few coals in the fireplace to try to extract some warmth. She struck me as too harsh to be reduced to this little measure. Yvonne, says Jean, meet the Maz. Here's the American producer of our same plays. Hello there, I greeted her. <laughs> Hello there. 